Well, Sarangi Murray is Wimbledon champion, a US Open winner, an Olympic gold medalist, and also become the BBC Sports Player of the Year a record three times. The award has been won by men for the last 14 years, but now Andy's mum, Judy, is calling for a new prize just for women. So, Sir Andy and Judy Murray join us now. Very good morning to you. Um, Judy Murray, it seems extraordinary that a woman has not topped that pole for more than 10 years, almost 15 years. What are you suggesting that women now get a female sports personality of the year award and the category is divided by gender? Yeah, I think, you know, if we want to raise awareness of, of women's sport and really raise the profile of our female athletes, why shouldn't we have an award that's just for women's sport? I mean, in, in most sports, women don't compete against men. So to have an award that's just for the women, I think, would raise awareness enormously of the quality um, of the, the sports women that we have out there. See, I totally agree with you. And it's, an, it's a quite an incendiary debate, this, because in many entertainment award shows, they're trying to scrap gender-specific awards and move to just genderless awards. And I've always said, I fear, uh, particularly where there are public votes, for whatever reason, that that will mean fewer women win. And that's what's been happening. Yes. I mean, and so I, I actually think you're right, but I do think people are going to throw their toys out of the pram about it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I certainly think it should be something that, that should be considered because we do need more visibility around women's sport and this certainly would create a lot of, of talking points. It would encourage more women and men to get behind it and to vote um, because it, it happens every year in sports personality. You know, that I, I'm guessing that the bulk of the voters are, are guys who watch predominantly male sport and we want to get more people watching female sport. Yeah, well, that would you... mean your own son may stop winning. Andy, <laughs> uh, Sir Andy, uh, how do you feel about your mother running a campaign to stop you winning BBC Sports <laughs> Personality of the Year? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly the purpose of what she's saying, but no, I, 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 think, uh, no, I think it would be a, a positive thing. Um, yeah, most years, you know, like we're saying, that when sports personality comes round, um, you know, there's obviously lots of fantastic achievements in female sport, but it's it's just not as visible um, as the male sport because, you know, it's maybe not covered as much in, in the press, um, not as much uh, visibility on the TV. So um, I think that would be a, a really positive step. Judy, you uh, are trying to address that issue of visibility. You've had this new series for Sky Sports Driving Force, which uh, looks at what makes a successful female athlete. But I wonder if you think there are female sports personalities who have been robbed. Who are the women that you think should have been winners? Well, I think over the years that we've only had three winners in, in however however many years. But I think, uh, as Andy says, it is a lot to do with, you know, if you can see it, you can be it. And we need to raise the profile of sports women and women in sport through the media, through TV, through more coverage. And I think a lot for me, we've had a huge momentum behind women's sport over the last few years. And the success, I think, particularly of the national teams in rugby, football, hockey, cricket um, and netball have massively raised awareness and, and talking points. And if you, it, for me, that proves that if you invest in the performance and the performance becomes world class, people want to watch it. It puts bums on seats. It gets it on the TV, and then everything falls into place from that, be, because it becomes more marketable. More money goes into it, and more people are watching it that then want to say, "I want to be like that," or "I want to try that." So for me, it's a, it's it comes from the investment in the grassroots and then into the performance end of it to get the performances up to a level where people do want to watch it. And Andy, I mean, we know that it was a big campaign. You were uh, in the forefront of this to get women equal pay in large swathes of the tennis world. Uh, and of course, the argument comes back, well, OK, if they're going to get the same money, say, at Wimbledon, they should play five sets, not three. What's your response to that? Yeah, I think it, that's, you know, for me, that's actually, that's a fair argument. Um, but it also goes, well, why, do, why don't the men play three sets? Um, it's not because the, the women are tennis. not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, I, think, um, I think a lot of the, the female players would be more than happy to play five sets. I think that 
um, the events haven't wanted the, the women's game to, to go to, to five sets for, for whatever reason. I don't know if it's tradition or not. Um, but it also, because the men's singles is, is five sets, it also doesn't allow the men to play the doubles competition as much because that's also five sets. So in a day, if you're playing a singles and doubles match, you could potentially play 10 sets mm. of tennis, which is very difficult physically to recover from. So for me, that's definitely a, you know, a, a fair argument. But I also, I don't think that the women are not asking to play less tennis. I'm sure they would all be happy to play best of five sets as well. So that's kind of up to the, the tournaments to, to and what's decide it been what like, and Andy, what's it been like um, for you in pandemic year? For all sporting people, it's been a very weird experience, hasn't it? How have you found it? Yeah, I found it tough, um, actually. So at the, the very beginning of the first lockdown, um, I was just uh, getting ready to start competing again. I've been injured. I'm just getting ready to start competing again. And then first few weeks of lockdown was, you know, a bit of a novelty, like being at home and around the family every single day. But then obviously, you know, I started to miss playing. Um, and it was about six or seven weeks before our National Tennis Centre opened again. And it was it was just great, like for like mental health, like obviously for me to get back on the tennis court, just practicing again um, after six or seven weeks of kind of not, not being allowed to, to do that. So that was great. And then returning without fans, that was um, that was weird and difficult um, and something that, you know, I'm hoping can change. See, I've I know had you down as a guy. I mean, look, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've always sensed the way you play the game that you have been empowered by fans, perhaps more than many other tennis players. And when you won Wimbledon, it felt like you were just soaking in the, the crowd behind you and it was rallying you to great heights. How do you find it with no one there? Yeah, so it, it's a good question because when we first came back to play, and every, well, for me anyway, I was desperate to just get back on the court competing. And the first couple of tournaments, I actually found it fine because I was loving being back out there competing. But after a few weeks of being in front of no fans, I started to feel it just felt pretty flat. Mm. So, yeah, it, it became more difficult the more events that we played for me, actually. And, yeah, I was just about to say, I mean, I really hope we can get the fans back in stadiums uh, at some stage next year. I know the government just announced some new guidelines um, yesterday uh, about that, about fans being allowed into to, to stadiums again, uh, hopefully not not uh, in the not-too-distant future. Well, so, yeah, that'll be, be good. We're at home, yeah. of course, aren't we? Because we can opt to listen to the crowd noise, the fan noise, and mm -hmm. that replicates a kind of normal football match, for instance. But, of course, the players aren't hearing that at all. You know, it is slightly deceptive. Yeah. And I can imagine Judy, um, you, you know, I mean, that's an important part of it, isn't it? Having that support, having people knowing that that energy is there. Yeah, well, you, you feed off the crowd, you know, in a good way and some, sometimes in a bad way. But for me, watching... You know, watching without a crowd, it's it's like watching a practice match. It just doesn't have the same the same feel at all. So I, I actually haven't watched an awful lot of it on the TV without the crowd for for that reason. It just doesn't feel like it's the normal world, which which it isn't. The only advantage we have, Andy, you're a fellow Arsenal fan, is actually I find the crowd noise oh, yeah, they put on is TV like... is now louder than what we normally have at the Emirates. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It is true. I actually haven't been along to the Emirates for a while, but I used to go before I um, had uh, kids and stuff. I used to go along uh, to watch Arsenal bunch there. Um, and yeah, sometimes the atmosphere was, was a little bit flat, but it makes a huge difference on the TV just having the crowd noise. It's amazing. That, it really you know, that does, doesn't it? Yeah, I, it, the experience weird, is so much better. I tried it both ways and the experience is so much mm. better. Uh, finally, Andy, there's a big debate raging, as you know, and it may actually have been already answered, we, we're going to hear soon, uh, about whether Lewis Hamilton should be knighted, as you were. Mm. Uh, one of the arguments being used against him was when he's still racing, well, you're still playing and you got knighted. Well, what's your view about Lewis, seven times world champion? Uh, do you think he deserves a knighthood? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm not necessarily all for, like, sports people being given, you know, knighthoods for what we do. Um, but, in ter like, if, in terms of what he's achieved as an athlete, of course, he deserves it as a sports person. I mean, he's, well, one of the most successful sports people in the history of 
of the country. He's an amazing, amazing driver. You know, he supports some great causes as well um, <clears throat> away from the, the racing track. So, yeah, I would say he, he definitely deserves it. He's also his, another his Arsenal fan, even. of course. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good reason to give him one as well. <laughs> uh, Andy, uh, Judy, it's fantastic to talk to you. Judy, I just want to say you're Here's doing. The... Yeah, well, sorry, sorry, I, I just told you fire for a moment, Andy. Andy, you'll Judy... have the last word. Don't worry. <laughs> Especially if it begins with Piers. Uh, Judy, you're doing amazing things. Uh, you've all, obviously already encouraged two very successful sportsmen, but you're doing incredible things to promote women's sport. And episode one of Driving Force is out. Out tonight, Sky Sports Mix and Sky Sports Arena at 9 p.m. Andy, you want the final word, I think. I don't know if you can see this, but um, I've got. Oh, uh, good man! <laughs> I've got your book here, but actually, I took I took the cover off because um, if you're reading it in public, you get a few dodgy looks. So um, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit more discreet. It's a shameful um, experience. Like actually, yeah, so, you know what? Before I even sent you one. You did text me to say that you were really annoyed because you'd been at an airport and you couldn't find it. You were gagging to read that book. <laughs> I was, and then I heard it was 20 quid and I was thinking, no, that's a, that's a little bit much. But You know um... what? You can take the man out of Scotland, but you can't take the Scotland <laughs> out of the man. Oh. I'll get you a discounted version, don't Oh, we? get uh, trouble guys, that. Uh, well, enjoy the book. Have you read it yet or not? I'm two-thirds of the way through it, so I'll let yeah. you know when... Um, well, can we yeah, have an I'm early finished, review? Yeah, minute. you're using it as uh, a doorstop, early, be honest. Early thoughts, Sir Andy? There's, no, there's some, some good stuff in there. It's interesting. It's made me think about a few things, uh, definitely, like, celebrity culture and um, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, there's also some inflammatory language in there, too, which, you know, probably... I, I assume winds the, the, the walkies up that you're talking about. Um, that's probably intentional. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's, it's good. Thank you, Sir Andy. That's one of the best reviews I've had and from one of the great athletes of our entire country's existence. So I uh, really appreciate you guys uh, coming on today. Uh, Judy, lovely to see you. Andy, great to see you.